Hello! Today we will focus on the risk of a chemical lesion in water treatment plants. Industrial or domestic waste water is collected by a sewage network. It is then treated in a wastewater treatment plant before being discharged into the natural environment or re-injected into a network. These wastewater treatment plants are now very present around us. In some sectors, the use of water is so intense that these industries have water treatment systems directly on their site. This is frequently the case in the food, chemical and paper industries. These systems are diverse and complex. Here we will present the most common steps from the initial pretreatment to the final treatment of the water. Let's take to the air to understand what we're talking about. First, the easily collectible materials are removed during water pretreatment. In general, the process consists of three steps screening, grit removal, and degreasing. Pre-treatment does not generally use chemicals. However, they can be used for equipment maintenance. These include detergents, strong acids or bases. Then comes the primary treatment. This is a simple decantation that removes most of the floating matter. The waste material forms a layer of sludge at the bottom of the decanter, called primary sludge. This sludge is then treated, and among the possible treatments, a chemical stabilization can be carried out by using lime, a corrosive product. The secondary treatment is most commonly achieved by a biological process, but a physico-chemical process can replace it. This physico-chemical process uses aggressive chemicals, such as lime and aluminium sulfate, an irritant, to remove floating matter. This treatment is often followed by clarification, this is the last step of the water purification process. It consists in letting the water rest to allow the last impurities to fall to the bottom. After this stage, the water is usually released back into the environment. It is clean enough to no longer pose a threat to ecosystems. The chemicals that can be used during these processes are ferric chloride, lime, hydrogen peroxide, oxalic acid, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid to 98% and caustic soda to 50%. The last two are used, in most cases, to stabilize the pH of the water. To limit the ecotoxicity of wastewater discharges, a phosphorus treatment is generally required for plants supplying 10,000 or more inhabitants. This treatment can use irritating products such as ferrous sulphate or ferric chloride. In addition, in some cases, a tertiary treatment can be applied. Again, there are different methods, but if the physico-chemical method is chosen, the use of chlorine, which is a corrosive product, may be intensive. Water treatment plants try to limit their impact as well as the nauseating odours. To this end, the air is washed with chemicals. Generally, they use sulfuric acid, lime and caustic soda. A final risk that should not be overlooked is related to the presence of numerous stainless steel pipes in these facilities, which may require welding for maintenance. The use of pickling pastes is often required to clean the wells of these pipes. They are usually composed of nitric acid, a corrosive product, and hydrofluoric acid, a corrosive and toxic product. This is a very specific risk. Do not hesitate to watch the other Prevor videos to learn more about the danger of hydrofluoric acid. To summarize, the main corrosive and irritating chemicals used in water treatment plants are lime, caustic soda, sulfuric acid, hydrogen peroxide, chlorine and ferric chloride. Training your staff on these risks combined with the wearing of the appropriate PPE, will always be your best ally in avoiding an accident involving a chemical splash. However, there is no such thing as zero risk. Hence the importance of having a versatile decontamination solution that stops the aggressiveness of all these chemicals. In case of a splash with one of these corrosive or irritating products, we recommend the use of Diphotarine solution. Do not hesitate to consult our website to learn more about its action and functioning.
There is one exception. In case of splashes with hydrofluoric acid and fluorides in an acidic environment, the hexafluorine solution is recommended. All the information about this solution can also be found on our website. A small side note, the chemical risk is not the only risk present in these facilities. You can easily forget about the risk of slips, trips and falls. They are enhanced by the use of flocculants, a powder used for the treatment of floating matter. When mixed with water, it produces an extremely slippery viscous liquid. Once this product is on the ground, it is very difficult to pick up and, after cleaning, it leaves a slippery residual layer. Don't hesitate to watch our video about the Polycaptor Absorbent, which has the ability to dry the soil by removing all residues. Thank you for your attention. For more information, please visit our website www.prevor.com or contact us by email or phone. I hope I've answered all your questions and we remain at your disposal. Thank you and have a nice day.